some pancakes because Milena refuses to eat my pancakes. Yeah, if I was my child, I would refuse to eat my pancakes too. And he put wild blueberries in there. Let's see, what's the pancake mix you use? He used this pancake mix. You just have to add water. And then he added some hemp hearts in there for some more uh, protein. And we use wild blueberries. Mm. Mm. Hear me? Yeah, we in there. We are here. We are outside We're looking for parking right now. Figure we're gonna meet in the trailer anyway. Now y'all gonna be two an hour. You gonna do it? Yeah, take that pick. Full five get it. You gonna keep going? I want the whole farm. got memories. I used to walk this path. I don't know if you see the same path. The same path all the way to. Football practice, right? All we football practice. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to walk this from, out, get out of school and go, that's what I said, look, that's pretty cool. So now here we are, 12, is it 12 years? I don't know. Open it up so you can see yourself. All right, y'all, so this is a 12 year reunion, I believe. I graduated 2010. Oh yeah, that is 12 years. 12 year reunion. All right, better take the inside. So it feels good to be back. <sighs> I'm just trying to stay focused. Stay clear-minded and just understand that you got this. You deserve to be here, and we are all rooting for you. What my wife said. We are all rooting for Kwame. We are here. We are so excited. For it's you. my story, right? So all I gotta do is tell it. So I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully I can inspire these kids to create their own story. Close quote. And when I'm on a football field, I don't see the crowd. Yes. Full circle, bro. Full yeah. circle for real. So I'm really locked in, to be honest with you. And there's our Lena Benna. Okay, so I don't think that we mentioned it, but Kwame was asked to be the keynote speaker at his old high school. So we came back here, it's 12 years after he graduated, and he is now the speaker, and it was just an amazing event, so we're glad to share it with everyone, and we hope you enjoy his speech. His time at Roxboro, Kwame Bell, a student athlete, went on to earn the All-City Selection here in Philadelphia in 2009 and 2010. Mr. Bell went on to attend two universities and completed his associate's and bachelor's degrees. He was also a student athlete in college, making the second team all PSAC. Kwame continued playing football on a professional level with the Indoor Football League. Over the next four years, he earned first team all CIF while working at juvenile facilities in whatever city he plays. He learned from the ins and outs of football, Kwame made a seamless transition to the world of entrepreneurship and investing. In March of this year, Kwame Bell donated his dollars. <laughs> Mr. Bell's motto of bet on yourself has taken him into the rooms that he's never dreamed possible. And he's here to motivate each of you to do the same. Kwame is a prime example of what Roxboro makes, makes Roxboro. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Kwame Bell. Y'all take a breath. It's been 12 years since I came back here. Hello class of 2022. Congratulations. Give yourself a round of applause. Also, give your parents, caregivers, a round of applause to help you get the car. Thank you, Ms. Smalley, for allowing me to speak to the class of 2022. Van has to speak. It's truly an honor. Thank you. I commend you, class of 2022. You have overcome struggles never seen before. Faced with a pandemic, social injustices, and violence in America, it has been unimaginable to begin to understand how you are being affected. You have overcome many of these hardships to be sitting here today. The parents, caregivers, teachers, and faculty, thank you for being, thank you for weathering the storm and being a back, backbone to these students in their times of need. Thank you. I grew, up, I grew up like some of you did, raised by a single mother, father incarcerated, and losing friends and family to gun violence. Making out of these struggles took an unwavering belief in myself 
I want to start by saying I am you, and that's why I'm here today. This chapter in my story started at Roxmore High School in 2006. The same year I lost my baby sister, Shada, on my birthday. With a heavy heart, I dove head first into my obsession with football. Your circumstances does not define you, but how you handle adversity does. And with this opportunity to speak to you today, it's my turn to tell my story and hopes to inspire you to create your own. As a 2010 graduate, I left Roxborough with a 2.4 GPA and a full scholarship to Delaware Valley University. <laughs> and a blind eye to make it to the NFL. But I didn't make it to Del Valle University because I believe I had a better shot at making it to the NFL at a D2 University. With no scholarship in hand, and now traveling to Virginia Union University, I was excited to play and earn a full scholarship. My time at Virginia Union didn't pan out the way I planned. I was cut from the team twice. <laughs> and uh, ended up on academic probation for the first year and a half. I also lost my father during this time. Overcome with emotion, I never lost sight I would play professional football. After finally making the team and earning a partial scholarship, I left the school to graduate from Clare University, where I also faced many struggles. However, I earned a full scholarship in football, and I graduated with my degree in sports management. With a chance, thank you. <laughs> with a chance to pursue professional football. Football was a vehicle I would hear all those years as a youth that could take me anywhere. And just like that, it did. This small kid from Philadelphia had the opportunity to play professional indoor football. League in the cities across the country like Colorado, Arizona, South Dakota, and Omaha. I had the opportunity to travel to Ethiopia, Egypt, Panama, and the Grand Canyon. I always credit football for building my confidence as a young man and giving me the tools to network with others build a team and be a leader. Being a professional athlete also came with his lessons. I struggled with depression, managing family and friend relationships, the impact of not being supported by the ones I love, and feeling alone. I had a decision to make, to give up and go back to Philly, or feel uncomfortable and grow. I chose to fight when I was at my lowest. I approached it with a deep determination. After my football career ended, I started to mentor youth in the community. I worked in the juvenile and school system as a behavior specialist. In 2018, I knew I needed to start a business. I always had the entrepreneurial spirit, whether it was pumping gas for change or selling chips and Kool-Aid in Roswell Lunchroom. Uh, over the years, I realized that football is a business. College is a business, and I am a business. I took ownership of these truths and what I've been pursuing all these years. I had to get in the game of life and create a legacy to lead my family. In 2019, I met my beautiful wife and business partner, Deanna. We went on to build an investment company which buys and holds real estate and stocks. Through countless hours of studying our craft, I was able to fire my job this, uh, this past year and invest in real estate become a real estate investor full-time. Yes, indeed. Woo! Overall, my message of my story is to continue to fight. Continue to believe that you are worthy of a life that isn't full of struggle, trauma, and hardship. There is growth in being uncomfortable. There is growth in the undenying belief that you are enough. There is growth and being open-minded and learning from your perceived losses. Make the life you want and live it. Keep going, your story is just beginning. Thank you all for listening to me and I wish you success in your future endeavors outside of Roxborough High, thank you.
me see what you got. I still going. They're right here. Right oh, they are right there. Oh, oh, they are right there. Oh, yeah. Let's wait for. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, big daddy. Ooh, ooh. What you got? <sighs> oh. He's gonna call me the strawberry picker. <laughs> oh, look right there, right there, right there. Right here. No. Cheese, you better not eat that girl. And Kwame's over there. How I zoom? Just kidding, I have no idea. Anyway, Kwame's over there <laughs> picking them strawberries. That's a good one. We don't need to fill the whole thing. Just get like a regular amount. Like you would get from the grocery store. Who <laughs> these strawberries grew like this? Everybody but us. <laughs> Mind you, he has allergies. <laughs> he did not take his local honey this morning. Guess who did though? <laughs> Your girl. Oh, no, that's a big ass one right there. Motherfucker Ooh. trying to hide. Ooh. Look at that mother. Had an attitude because I um, wouldn't let her eat it, so she threw all of her strawberries on the foot. <laughs> Love toddlerhood. Love it. Clean up. Clean. Clean up. Clean up. <laughs> Y'all don't mind her hair. She wouldn't let me take out her hair. I was gonna do a braid out on my hair and on her hair, but she didn't want me to take her braids out. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we don't eat those. <laughs> hey, bye bye. They like they do like the big roaches and see little roaches. Tell me if you seen a regular roach, you would be crazy. It look like a roach. It's a roach. Is the roaches? The I thought that was crawfish. They all uh, from roaches. <laughs> Stroller hooks and the stroller got the baby who is slump walking to the now and call me holding everything. That's just how that's just how it be. Thanks for watching our vlog. Maybe I'll do a, a haul. Actually I'm not. <laughs> Thanks for watching our vlog. See you on our next one. Peace.